Hi everyone, it's Stephanie Nipper here with another spinning related video. Sorry for the kids in the background. Um, I was trying to get this set up and the dogs popping up on the table. Um, I was trying to get this set up to run before everyone came home from school, but uh, it didn't work out that way. We had What I want to do today, you might see that I have a drum carter here. My lovely husband got this for me for Christmas. I've been wanting one forever. I know if you've seen the videos of me processing different um, raw fleece and the drum carter really aids in that. Today what I want to show you how to do is to make this bat. Now this is just a little bat that I made for practice. Um, and the reason that I'm, I'm showing you this, because it, it looks relatively um, normal, although I love it. I love natural colors when it comes to um, spinning and fibers, so everything in this bat is just the, the color of the wool naturally. But the reason that I'm showing you this one specifically is if you watched my video where my son Jonathan and I went to the Kentucky Fiber Festival, you'll know that I purchased this big bag of cashmere at the festival. Normally it was $99 and I got it for $25. Now, I've never spun cashmere before. I've um, knit with it and it is heavenly. But, and so I don't know um, the quality of cashmere typically. I don't have any experience with it beyond what has already been milled in yarns that I've used. But, um, so this will be a new learning experience for me and I hope that we can all learn along together. But as you can see, the staple length here is very, I mean, it's, it's tiny. Look at that. That's the staple length. It's very, very small. Okay. Very, I mean, that's not even an inch. Okay. So, um, my thought was obviously with such a short staple length, I cannot prepare it in a combed method where the fiber is all aligned in the same direction. So I want to prepare it in a carded method. And for that, you would either use hand cards, a blending board, or a drum carder. <clears throat> now, what I was talking about earlier where I'm not sure what the quality is, I'm sure this is not the best quality cashmere for $25. Even, even this whole bag, if it was still at $100, that's still probably not the best quality cashmere, but I think it's great for learning on. It's still wonderf wonderfully soft, and um, I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens when I spin it. I'm gonna talk you through this a little bit first. Because the staple length is so small on the cashmere, I will not be putting it on the drum carter first. First, I will put down a layer of merino, and um, the merino that I have is just the natural color. It's undyed. It's in this right here. This was a, a one pound thing of merino I bought a while ago. Um, I will also be adding some alpaca. It will be both in natural colors also. In this bat, I added um, white and a brownish alpaca for this one i've used all of my brown that i have prepared already so i'm going to use a black alpaca so i will be using merino cashmere and alpaca to make this blend first i will be laying down merino and i'll be filling the drum carter with a thin layer of merino then i'll start adding the cashmere and the alpaca so that and then I'll finish with another layer of merino so that ultimately it's like a sandwich and I'm sure you've watched other carding videos especially um, if people are making art bats they might sandwich some of that really interesting texture in between two layers well that's kind of the same idea except I'm sandwiching these very very small this these fibers with a very small staple length that's what's going to be sandwiched in between the layers of merino and I'm doing that because if I put the cashmere on first it would get stuck in the tines of my drum carter and it would not come out so the merino kind of holds or acts like glue or bread and holds everything together so that's what I'm going to show you how to do I'm going to set up everything with my drum carter and I'll be back in a minute 
I've got my drum carter set up. It's on my table and um, I've got the uh, handle here on the outside so it doesn't hit into anything. I have the liquor in brush down so that it can help push everything in. And I'm going to start off with Merino. Now, if you're new to drum carding, what I like to do, I know some people put a whole lot of fiber in at once, but especially when I'm starting or when I am making a bat with finer fibers and I'm wanting to ultimately spin a finer yarn, especially when I've got fiber like um, alpaca or cashmere or in this case merino, I don't lay down a whole lot at once. Um, so I'm taking, I'm pulling a little bit at a time like this. Hope you can see that. You see how, how I'm drafting out such a small amount? I'm putting that amount of merino down here on this tray, and then I'm going to turn this so that it goes in. Now, I'm not going to put my hand down here so that it's pulling back on the fiber. Instead, I just might help push it forward a little bit, and I let it go in, okay? So I've got a little bit on here, so I'll just roll it again, that's okay, and that's off. Now, there's not much at all, not much fiber at all on this big drum yet, and that's okay. That's what I want. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got allergies going on here, something awful. So again, I am just putting down another layer of merino, and I'll do that until I have a nice layer um, a nice bottom layer for the bat here. I'll keep doing the same thing. Putting it in here, letting it be fed onto the drum, not holding the fiber back, and just repeating. And you can do this differently if you want to. There's no law that says you have to do it the way I'm doing it. This is just what I was experimenting with, and I came up, um, it's the technique I came up with that worked to really hold those um, short staple lengths in place. What I'm gonna do this time is go ahead and draft out a few bits of merino here so that I can push it forward um, and be ready. Once these are fed into the drum, then I can push these forward and go into the drum. Oh, I hear my daughter getting into something. I have to go over and find out what that is. Okay, here we're ready. So you see I'm not pulling back on any of the fibers. If I did that, if I held these back and continued to spin, all the fiber would get trapped on this smaller drum. So don't do that, okay? I learned that the hard way. So now I'm pushing these forward. There we go. And you'll start to see a little bit more on the drum. I hope you can see that. And these don't have to be straight. Remember, we're doing a carded preparation, which means that um, the fibers will not be aligned, okay? It means the fibers are going to be just kind of jumbled up any direction, and then when we spin it, those fibers, instead of twist, uh, twisting this way together, they'll kind of, sorry, my daughter's coughing. And, okay. Is she okay, Caleb? Okay. Okay, so the fibers will be all jumbled up like this and there will be pockets of air trapped in them. Probably one more. Now what I'm doing here is I'm checking on the bat. Let me see if, you can, if I can turn it a little bit so you can see. And um, you'll see I don't have as much fiber here on the ends that I do as I do in the middle. So I'm going to add some bits of fiber just here and here to sort of build up those areas. And I'm gonna do that again.
so I've got a decent layer of merino. It's very thin. It's a very thin layer, but I've got a decent layer of merino on there now. So I'm still not going to put the cashmere down though because it is so, um, the staple length is so short that I'm still afraid I might lose some. Instead, I'm going to um, put this alpaca, it's black alpaca, I'm gonna put it in there, and it has a very long staple length. So I'm going to put it in. It will also help trap the cashmere in there. And the reason though that I did not put the alpaca, oops, a little vegetable matter in there. The reason I did not put the alpaca in first is because the cloth on my drum carter is, I believe, 72 TPI. That means times per inch. That's the little metal, um, the little metal thing sticking up there. And that is just for your normal. Um, it's for neither coarse nor thin, nor fine, I should say, coarse nor fine fibers. You see I've got a little bit of alpaca sticking to the smaller drum, so I just lifted that off. And I'll just set it here. I'm gonna put some more in here. Now I don't want to, um, if I put a whole bunch of this black alpaca in here, eventually, since I've got black and white going on, it would blend together and form a gray, but I like a little bit of the um, striations in the color, so I'm going to keep it this way. I'm not going to, in other words, I'm not gonna card it enough so that it completely blends together because I don't want the color to change. Okay, maybe just a tiny bit more. And what I could do if I wanted is I could make very definite um, stripes. I could make stripes of black and stripes of white, but I'm not trying to do that. That's just sometimes how it ends up. Okay. See, each time I've got a few pieces of this alpaca that are so fine that it's just staying on the smaller drum. And I'll clean that off completely when I'm finished. There. I try and get it to go on the other. Okay. So now you see I've got a nice mix of merino and alpaca here. I actually think I'm gonna put a little bit more merino in just to, to, to do maybe, I don't know, two more passes with merino here. Again, just to make sure that that cashmere stays where I'm wanting it to stay, where I'm putting it so it doesn't get trapped in the drum carter. Now when I end up spinning this, I will film it and we can see how it turns out. I think that would be fun to see. Okay, this is probably it for the merino. Yeah, I think that's it. I can feel it's starting to build up a little bit. And that's good. You want to really watch yourself. I'm sure you've heard it before. You really want to watch your hands. You can get, these are very sharp and you can cut yourself on them easily. Okay, so let's get you a little closer. See, this is what it looks like right now. You can definitely see the difference between the white merino and the black alpaca. And what I'm going to do now is add, add the cashmere. You would think I could just add it in here the way I did with the other fibers, but what I found when I tried that, um, doing this practice bat, is that it was so fine, it was only getting on this smaller drum. So instead, what I'm going to do is I just am laying this out on top here and I'm, I'm drafting it apart so that I don't have enormous clumps all around. Now if I wanted this to be more combined after I 
did all of this with this bat, I could always take it apart, feed it through again, and it would combine all of the fibers instead of leaving them slightly separate like this. And I might do that as an experiment before I spin to see which is easier. But for now, I'm just doing it this way. And you, you'll see, you see the cashmere, it's just plopped on top here. There's no, I'm not making any special pattern or anything like that. What I'm doing is I'm just trying to cover the exposed part of the carter and I'm just trying to keep it so that there's at least some cashmere um, in each section. I don't want any big blank spots where there is not any cashmere. Okay, And then I'm going to take this. This is just a regular old paintbrush. It's pretty soft. It's not one of those really stiff bristled ones, but it is stiff enough that I can do this and it's not going to destroy it. And I'm just going to sort of gently push the cashmere down into the tines, okay? And you'll see some of it doesn't want to even go down there. And I'm not, I'm not beating it down all the way or anything like that. I'm just making sure that it is actually trapped in those tines. You see, when I start, sometimes it comes out that's okay. And just work it in there. Move it around. And you can move your this big drum back and forth as you need to. That's okay too. Once I have it in there, what I'm going to do is take this this brush. It's like a, a flicker brush and I am going to comb this all, okay? And it just helps, again, card the cashmere a little bit and get it really down into those tines. Now, I'm going to move, open up another clear section of the drum carter and repeat the process. So, I'm gonna dab on the cashmere same thing put it all around here oops I'm gonna try and stop it right there Okay, now I'll take my paintbrush again and just kind of push it in there. And I'll do this all the way around until the entire, until there's cashmere all over the drum. Okay, so this, so now I take my, this brush again. Oops. And I'm gonna do this same thing. This will probably be the last or second to last section. And I'm just really putting the cashmere in here. I'm not, like I said before, I'm not following any order, any plan. I just want a good amount of cashmere throughout the entire bat. And I don't know how this is going to spin up, but I will definitely let you know once I do spin it. it. Might work, it might not, but that's how we learn, right? You learn by trying and sometimes by making mistakes, and that's okay. 
I teach creative writing and I tell my students that often you'll learn more through your mistakes than you do through your successes. So that's something that I try to carry over into any of my artistic endeavors. It's hard because I want it to be perfect every time, as we all do, but it can't be. <laughs> This all in now. Oops, this one's not. And as you'll see here, I'm back at the beginning. Oh, no, we've got one small spot left to do that's open that does not have cashmere. And then we'll get to it and then stop. It's this last little bit right here, it does not have cashmere. So I will add that on, and then we're just gonna repeat the same process that we did in the beginning. We're going to lay down some merino, then some more alpaca, and then some more merino. And you can keep going um, in this manner until your bat is as thick as you want it to be. Um, I will probably stop with just these layers right now, just because of time, because of my kids. Um, getting home soon and having to do mom stuff and you know make dinner kids have to eat right <laughs> can't play with fiber all day long even though we might want to oh and those of you who watched my um my video that i made from the kentucky fiber festival i told jonathan um that everyone liked it so and he was really impressed with that. So thank you, everyone who commented on that. You made his day. Okay. Last time. Gracie, don't. Sorry. I always keep an eye on the kiddos. Okay, and now we'll run this through one more time here. And I should really have this clamped to the table. Normally I do. Okay, so now I'm going to go merino, alpaca, merino again, okay? And if I don't end up liking the natural colors, when it's finished, I can always dye the finished yarn. So that's an option too. Instead of having to dye all of this merino and alpaca and everything separately, I can just spin the yarn and then dye it if I want to. But so I'm going with the merino on top of the cashmere first, again, to really hold those fibers, those fine, short staple length fibers in place. And I could just lay this down here and sort of paint it on that way, but I want to control the um, fineness of the fiber that I'm putting down. You see how I'm drafting very small, thin pieces. And I can't do that yet as well when I'm just painting it on. Uh, I think I'll do one more with the merino and then move to alpaca. And then stop or end it all with merino. one more we're gonna again I'm not getting the ends with enough merino 
So I'm going to just put some here on the sides of the carter and get that in, get that in. And you know, you can think about it. You could lay your fiber down like this and these could be, you know, you could lay down different colors this way. There's a lot of different things you can do with the drum carter. There we go. Much better. I love having this. Because you can, when you're, when I first started spinning, I thought that um, you could only spin thicker yarns from a carded preparation, but that's not it at all. You can still spin very nice, fine, yarn from carded preparations too. Okay, now alpaca. I looked at an alpaca farm this weekend. Hopefully we'll be moving soon, not soon, but within the next year or two. And when I do, I'm hoping to have some of my very own fiber animals, which would be so much fun. Can you imagine? Oh, that's pretty. Again, alpacas. Normally I buy my alpaca, um, I just buy the fleece raw and then prepare it. This is one that has been combed into top that I purchased from my local yarn uh, yarn store and it's very very soft but the staple length is is really long and it, there's hardly any crimp which has me wondering if this is Surrey alpaca instead of Wakaya alpaca which is fine I love Surrey also it's just um, you use the two for different things and you prepare them a little bit differently One of my sons is keeping an eye on my daughter, Grace, who is acting up a little bit. So Caleb, I'll be finished here in just a minute. Thank you for your help. Grace is, I'm sure you've seen her in some of my other videos, but she has um, some pretty significant special needs. And so she's always quite a handful, or she can be quite a handful most of the time. Okay. So I could not be filming this right now if I didn't have my sons helping me. And they're good boys. They help me whenever I need it. So finally, I've got the alpaca in here. Now I'm going to add some more merino, a final kind of thing of merino, and then we'll take it off and take a look at it. Caleb, honey, do you wanna just put a snack out for her? So we're gonna try and get Grace to sit at the table and just take a snack. Sometimes she eats it, sometimes she throws it on the floor, which is why the dogs like to be next to her. If you ever wonder what's going on in the background while I'm doing this, most often it's something with kids. Here's Grace. I don't know if you can see Caleb or not, but he's in there too. I'm gonna try and get this back so that it doesn't fall. Okay, so here we are. Finishing up with Merino. Final layer here. And I would probably, like I mentioned before, I would normally put more, make this bat thicker. Um, but I'm just trying to get this finished before everyone else gets home for, from school. 
It's their last week at school and everybody's excited to be out. Okay. Now, I, what I'm doing here is, this is the little um, place that's missing tines on the drum carter, and it's where I can see how thick the, um, the bat is, and it's pretty good. I'm gonna add, again, I, this is me. I just keep missing fiber here. Now, I don't, I don't put the fiber all the way out to the edge, edges of the tines, because then it can get down here and wrap around and make a mess but I seem to always be thinner on the ends. So hopefully as I do more of this, I will <laughs> learn to address that issue. I'll remember to pile up some more on the sides. There we go, almost. And it's gonna be pretty. Again, I like fiber in the natural colors. So, um, so I, I, I dye fiber too sometimes, but I really prefer it in the natural colors. Okay, there we go. Very nice. Okay, so now we're finished. And I've stopped it so that this, I don't know what this is called. This is up the top and I'm taking this little tool that came with the drum carter. I don't know what it's called. It looks like a screwdriver but with a very pointy edge, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm just putting it along this metal strip and putting it under the fiber and then pulling it up. It's just like drafting, but um, it's so it pulls apart just like it does when we're drafting, okay? So you see and I'm gonna pull this forward, separate it a bit. Sometimes it can be a little tricky, but there we go, face. So now you see I've got, and I should probably be on the other side here, taking this off. So I've got all this fiber pulled up here. A little bit that didn't come off. I'm gonna go back through. Sorry for the chip noises in the background. Get all of this out. Okay. So what I'm gonna do now is take this. I like to start rolling it this way. Roll it under a little bit. And then as I roll the drum carter along, I just Take the bat off. It's just like using a blending board. And you could even use the, the two little dowels that come with the blending board and um, use those to remove the bat if you wanted to roll it into something that's really tight. I would probably do that if I was preparing something to sell. But since this is just an experiment for my use, I'm not too worried about it. But you see, I keep rolling and turning, rolling and turning. And occasionally you get a little bit of fiber that sticks to it. It's okay. For the most part, it comes off nice and clean. And the places though, where I did not have enough merino and alpaca down, I, ha I did have one spot and right here you can see it. The cashmere came through. That's why I made that sandwich of fibers. So what I did is I just tucked it in to the bat on the inside. And here we are back up at the beginning. Pull that off. And we have this lovely bat. So I will, when I spin it up, I will film that and let you know how it goes. But until then, thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something and until next time, happy spinning. Please click like and subscribe if you'd like to learn more fiber tricks and tips.